Welcome to this month's edition of the Chemical of the Month from Hazmat IQ. My name is Joe Gorman, and we'll be using our charts and our books. And this month's chemical is acrylonitrile. So make sure you get your books and your charts, and let's get ready to roll. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is I want to review the four-step system. Right? It's four steps for a reason. It's not a three-step system. It's not a two-step system. It's a four-step system. So what do they do? If you look at step number one, step number one is a size up. And if you also look underneath where it says one, it gives you 20 seconds. That's the amount of time it should take you to determine if it's above the line or below the line. Then you should be able to, in that same 20 seconds, be able to call out a play. Red 7, Red 9, Red 15. So all of your members of your team know the hazards within 20 seconds. Step 1, size up. Prediction needs to be verified in step 2 using the book. When we go to the book, we use the NIOSH pocket guide, but it doesn't matter. If you have a computer database like Tomes, Cameo, as long as you can find the chemical physical properties, you can use whatever information you have. But remember, you must verify from size up to step two verification to make sure that our size up is correct, accurate, and adjusted properly. That, that information in step one and step two allows us to make educated decisions on what PPE to wear, what meters to bring, what meters will hit, what's the initial hot zone. It allows us to all work downrange safely, bringing meters dressed in the right PPE, which is step four, and knowing this, no matter what PPE you are in, there's hazards out there that you're not protected from. We call it red lights in our class. So you must know your red lights. And if you hit a red light, it's time to stop, reevaluate, and there's only one reason in our system that you run a red light. And that's a line of sight rescue. I can see somebody who's alive. That person's not dressed in PPE. I'm dressed in PPE, so I have to do a quick risk assessment, decide risk benefit. What's the benefit to me going forward? I can save a life. Is there a risk? Sure there is but we're willing to take that risk to save another life. Okay, so let's get back to acrylonitrile. We, st we started with the four-step system. Now the next thing we do is we go to chart number one or chart number two to determine if it's above the line or below the line. I'm a fan of chart number two. Chart number two is nice because it's alphabetical and I can look at the A's and I look for acrylonitrile and I say nothing, I don't see acryl up there, so that's a no, takes me to above the line. So I'll, I'll report out to my team, this chemical is above the line. And as soon as I know that, my whole team trained in the hazmat IQ system knows, predicts, can predict the same thing I can predict. And this is what I predict. I predict that this chemical is a gas. The vapors are heavier than air. It has an LEL, a UEL, a flash point in carbon and hydrogen, which means it's flammable. I predict that it polymerizes. It has an ionizing potential. It's a corrosive acid with fluorine. It's toxic in parts per million. It's radioactive until proven otherwise. And it reacts with water and air. We all, everyone on my team knows that as soon as I say above the line. The last bullet in the above the line box says continue on chart number three. So flip over to chart number three. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds here to figure out if you can come up with the right number. Clue, start in the carbon and hydrogen flammable clue box. Okay, let's, let's see what we got here. Look at acryl. Do you see acryl up there? Yes. There's a red letter P next to acryl. Remember what that means. Acryls polymerize. Polymerization blows up. It's vitally important that we understand that. So we got a yes up in the, for the acryl in the carbon and hydrogen that allows me to come down now and put it in a family. Well, the last the name of this family is nitrile. Nitrile, 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 nit. Oh, there it is. It's a red nine. So as soon as we say red nine, it changed my initial size from above the line to red nine. As soon as I say red nine, what are the hazards? Red nines are flammable, toxic, corrosive, and look at the letter P there, they polymerize. So one of the things we've been teaching over the last year or so and I don't know if, if you got class later than a year ago, you might not have heard this before, but what we want to do is when we say red nine, it, we want to be a little more descriptive than red nine. Red nine, sure, they polymerize, but I, tell me if this makes sense to you. Let's call it a red nine P. 
I want everybody on my team to know this chemical has the potential to polymerize or blow up. So we'll call this from now on red 9 p And we go from left to right, we look at our meters. Remember, the X's are the meters that we predict that will give us readings. If it's a red X, it's an acid under pH. If it's a blue X, it's a base under pH. So this one has a red X. So acrylonitrile is a corrosive acid. That's toxic, flammable, polymerizes. Now, based on that PPE, you can, you can go all the way to the right and look for your PPE column, and you'll see a big X under the turnout gear. For all our firefighters out there, turnout gear is the best level of dress for this flammable, toxic, corrosive polymerize based on flammability. If you work for an organization, look, they don't give you turnout gear. You're not a firefighter. They only give me level B. What do I wear? Wear level B. But just realize when you're in level B, flammability is a big issue. So bring that LEL meter. Know that your red light when you're in level B. Look what it says above B. 1% of the LEL. That's when it's time to get out. So we just completed step number one. Now we're in step number two which is the book. So we'll use the NIOSH again. Everybody turn to acrylonitrile. That'll be under the A's. When you look at acrylonitrile, we go right down our check sheet to see, first of all, state of matter. I want to know if it's a solid, liquid, or gas. We look in the same place called physical description, and it says that it is a liquid. Good news. Liquid hot zones shrink initially from 300 to 150. So that's my initial hot zone. Remember what initial means. Initial means before meters. Listen, on acrylonitrile, if you have a liquid and it's 150 and the temperature is 500 degrees on a rail car, your initial hot zone is not 150 feet. That changes because you got an explosion hazard that's one half mile. You got a huge evacuation based on that. But let's verify our hazards. So we know it's a liquid. We want to know if the liquid vapors are heavier or lighter than air. We look at the molecular weight. It's 53.1, meaning the vapors are going down. Now I go to the LEL, the UEL, the flashpoint, and the, and the formula for flammability clues. If there are numbers in the LEL, yes, it is flammable. Since this is a liquid, I need to go to the flashpoint to find the temperature that this liquid becomes flammable. This has a flashpoint of 30 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning any time the liquid spill is warmer than 30 degrees, it is flammable. If it's colder than 30 degrees Fahrenheit, it's not flammable. So in the summer, flammable, maybe where you live, the winter, not flammable. Next, does this chemical polymerize? Three places, remember, look at the formula. Do you see an equal sign? Yes. Look at the DOT box. Does the three-digit number, the guide number, end in a P? Yes. Down to polymerization. Look what this one says. Note, usually inhibited. That just means they added a chemical in it to prevent it from blowing up. And it says it's used to prevent polymerization. So this chemical does polymerize. So again, my temperature gun becomes utmost important. Polymerization will give you an outward sign, warning sign. It gets hot. And if it gets hot, we get out because we don't want to be around if something blows up. Next, can I use my PID? I look at my ionizing potential, my IP. The IP is 10.91. My lamp is 10.6. If the IP is higher than my lamp, I can't use the PID. So we can't use the PID to measure uh, vapors in the air. So I have to look to see if my flame ionizing detector, my FID, will work. So go up to the formula, and for an FID to work, you got to have carbon and hydrogen. Does this have carbon and hydrogen? Yes. So the FID would be the tool of choice for measuring small amount of vapors in the air. Next, is this chemical toxic? Up to the ideal H. What's it say up there? CA. CA is not calcium. It's not California. It causes cancer if you breathe this in. So it's super important that we all wear turnout gear on this. This is not going to cause cancer tomorrow. It'll cause cancer when you retire. So we got to make sure we wear our SCBA on this one. Next, we go find out if it's corrosive or not. Clues. Corrosive gases would be guide 118, 123, 124, 125. Well, this is a liquid, so that's not going to help. So down to incompatibilities and reactivities. And this one says, look, attacks copper. Clue that it polymerizes. That's a clue that it's corrosive. Not a fact, but it's a, it's a clue. We'll bring our pH paper with us.
to, make, to check to see if it's corrosive or not. Back up to the DOT box, 161, 162, 163, 164, 165, 166, none of those, not radioactive. We go down to the incompatibilities and reactivities and I look for water or air, I see neither. So my PPE as a firefighter will be Turnac here, SCBA. What's my hierarchy of, of meters importance? Well, I'm really concerned about polymerization. So temp gun, which I can do from a distance, LEL for flammability, for toxicity, I can't use a PID, so I'm using an FID. And since this is corrosive to copper, pH paper on my mask to protect me, pH paper to dip to see if it's corrosive or not. So I'm wearing Turnac gear. If you wear level B, fine. Just realize that level B means it's made out of plastic, and plastics don't do well in fires. So that's this month's edition of the Chemical of the Month. My name is Joe Gorman. If you ever have any questions, feel free to call us. If not, we'll see you next month. Peace out.